This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. This lecture is continuing Chapter 12. Uh, and we're going to look at the Delta Hedge. In the uh, previous lecture, we discussed what share options were and um, how we calculate the price, the value of an option. Uh, now I'm going to explain what a Delta Hedge is and what the arithmetic involved is. And to explain uh, what a Delta Hedge is, if you look back at the formula for a call option, the value of a call option is equal to PA times ND1 minus PE ND2 times E to the minus RT. Now that will give you, in theory anyway, on any one day, it will give you the value the price you'd have to pay for a call option and it, without going through every symbol it will um, PA remember is today's market value PE is the exercise price, RT, we've been through all the others well of course from day to day option prices will change because all the things in that formula will change obviously the current share price will change the exercise price won't but the time to expire will, and so on. But we say in the very short term, if we're just looking at the difference perhaps between today and tomorrow, in the very short term, we say all of the variables are fixed except for today the, the current share price. You see, the exercise price is certainly fixed. It'll be the same, you know, go back in a week's time. It's the same exercise price. But go back in a week's time. And, of course, the current market value of the share could have changed. And, therefore, the price of a call option will have changed. And so, since we assume that everything else is fixed... Then, would you not agree that the change in the value of a call option will be equal to the change in the value of the share times ND1. Now, I do appreciate, and I have said, uh, in the longer term, all other factors can have changed, R and T and everything, but certainly in the short term, as the share price changes, the call option will change, and it'll change, the rate of change, it'll be ND1, and we call that figure ND1, we call it delta. Now, how can we use that? Well, first of all, if you look back for a moment to example 5 on the previous page that we did uh, in the last session, we had a share, the share price was $1.50, the exercise price $1.80, and so on. We worked out ND1 to be 0.2451. And so, looking back to what I just said, for that example, as the value of a share changes, the value of a call option will change as well. And it'll be, the, the change, it'll be times ND1, or point two, what was it, 2451, I think? Lost it, yes, 2451. Now think for a minute, it means as the share price goes up, the value of a call option will go up. But if the share price went up by a dollar, the value of a call option won't go up by a dollar, 
it'll only go up by a dollar times 0 0.2451. So an increase of a dollar in the share price for this particular example would mean an increase in the option price of 0 0.2451 times a dollar i.e. Uh, well, nearly 25 cents. So as the share price goes up and down, the option price goes up and down, but the change is smaller. The change in the option price here is only 24.51% of the change in the share price. Well, we can use that fact. Now, I'm going to present this in the way that the old examiner did in his questions. The new examiner hasn't asked this so far. It may beg one little question, but I'll explain that afterwards. But to explain, look at example 6. Now, example 6 is exactly the same figures as example 5, exactly. The current share price is $1.50, the option price, the exercise price is $1.80 in three months, risk-free 10%. Standard deviation, 40%. So it's exactly the same question. Uh, and we'd worked out in example 5 um, what the price was of a call option, of a put option. And we'd worked out ND1. It says Martin owns a 1,000 shares. Now, he owns a 1,000 shares. The share price is currently $1.50. And it says devise a delta edge to protect against changes in the share price. Well, of course, what Martin's going to be worried about is that the share price might fall. He owns a 1,000 shares. And if the share price were to fall, he's going to lose money. And he wants to protect himself. He wants to hedge against that risk. Well, think about what I just said. First of all, if the share price does fall, all right, he loses money. But what would happen to the price of options? Surely the price of call options will fall as well. Well, we know he'll lose money uh, if the share price falls. To protect himself, how could he make a profit out of call options? How could he make a profit out of the price falling? What he can do is sell call options now. And buy back later. And you can do that. Even though you don't own any. You can sell options now and buy them later. And depending whether the price has gone up or down, you make your profit or loss. And here, surely, if the share price falls and he's lost money, option price will fall. But if he sold some options and the price falls, he can buy them back later at a profit. And that's what he's going to do. The only trouble is, of course, if the share price was to fall by a dollar, the option price will fall as well, but it'll only fall by 25 cents. So he's lost a dollar on his share, but the option price, remember he's sold now and he buys later at the lower price. So he has made a profit, but he's only made a profit of 25 cents. Well, that's not going to compensate for the loss of a dollar. So what's he going to have to do? Surely, in order to make the same profit on options equal to the loss he makes on the share, surely for every share he owns, he's going to have to sell four options. If he sells four options, on each option he makes a profit of 25 cents, so four options he makes a profit of a dollar, which will compensate him for the loss on one share. 
And so what he's going to do to protect against the changes in the share price, he will sell call options. And the number he'll sell, well remember he has a thousand shares. He's going to have to sell more options. He's going to have to sell almost four options for every one share. Or more precisely, if we divide by 0 0.2451, the number of call options he'd have to sell, uh, I get to be a 4,080. And if he sells 4,080 options, if the share price falls, the money he loses on his shares, well, because the call option price will fall as well, he'll gain for um, exactly the same amount uh, on his options. And that's known as a delta hedge. Now, um, as I say, that's the way your examiner presented it. Uh, and it's easy arithmetic. The number of options you need to deal in is simply the number of shares that are at risk divided by ND1. And to be safe, learn that. It's not on the formula sheet. Uh, we now have to calculate ND1 from the previous examples. Uh, but do learn that just to be safe. Now, I said that's the way the old examiner presented questions when he did ask it. But in fact, it was a little bit silly. Because, of course, Martin here, we've read about his share price falling. And, and a much easier way of protecting would have been to buy some put options. Because that allows him to sell at a fixed price. Uh, the people who really use delta hedges, in fact, are option dealers. Because, you see, if you were an option dealer, this same question, if you'd sold 4,080 options, call options, you're at risk. Because you sold to people the right to buy shares at a fixed price. And what's going to happen if they all start buying those shares? Well, how can you protect yourself as the option dealer? Remember, you're worried as option dealer that the share price will go up. It, the more the share price goes up, the more chance there is um, <clears throat> that the purchasers are going to exercise them and you'll lose money. So the way to protect yourself as the dealer is to buy some shares. Because if the price goes up, although you lose money on your options, you'll make the profit on the shares. The option dealer will do this, but effectively the other way around. The option dealer, if he's at risk on 4,080 options, <clears throat> what he'll do is buy 1,000 shares. And then he's protected. Share price goes up. The risk is people exercise their options. Dealer loses money. Share price goes up, dealer owns some shares, dealer makes the compensating profit. Okay, think about that. That's a delta hedge. The um, <clears throat> I said several times that that was looking very short term, that in fact the option prices are affected by everything else, um, the rate of interest, the time to expire, and so on. And in fact, the option dealer will keep having to adjust this hedge as other factors change. Uh, and they have uh, there are formulae calculated for the effect that these other factors have, and they're known as the Greeks. Now, you cannot be examined on any numbers to do with the Greeks, but do have a read of paragraph 6, just in case there's a mention of them. However, that's share options. In the next chapter, 
we'll look at very easy in fact but we'll look at how option pricing can be relevant for the financial manager in the ordinary net present value type of um, decision investment appraisal